Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we're a teaching center dedicated to excellence in hands-on training and general knowledge in dentistry. And today we're going to discuss part five, which is the hollow grind inlay. So you may be wondering, what is a hollow grind? Well, it's essentially any concavity that you can create in a preparation utilizing a burr like this, like this 7404. Let me show you some examples. A couple of amalgams are failing. We're going to replace these with gold today. And the preparations are completed. And that little lingual extension is a hollow grind. Perhaps you can see it a little bit better in the upcoming impression. Here are a couple of cases where hollow grinds have been implemented to solve what used to be a really difficult situation, creating a little box in that lingual or buckle extension. And with the hollow grind technique, a lot of possibilities uh, are presented for us. Today we're going to be working on a hollow grind on the mesial and the distal of this MOD. And then in the future video, we're going to talk about the hollow grind on the distal of that canine. So, like all of the uh, procedures that we do for castings, after we've blocked out and we have anatomy that's pretty uh, much like the tooth in, in terms of its uh, contours, we're going to go ahead and start with the 330 burr and make a little slit. And after this slit is made, this gives us our 1.5 millimeter depth cut. We can now work on getting this to draw utilizing a small carbide, straight carbide, like a 55 or a 56. And in this particular case, we're just going to go ahead and pretend like we were going to drop boxes. We're going to create our flares in the normal manner, being really careful on that mesial facial for aesthetic purposes. We're going to just barely break that contact. Tip the bird towards the wall that you're engaging to make sure that you always have adequate draw. And we're looking for about 11 or 12 degrees of total occlusal divergence. That's about the same divergence that you would see in a Dixie cup. Once again, we're not dropping the box now. We're just working on the occlusal portion to get the proper draw. And the patient, you're going to be using water spray with this procedure, except for the very end when you're doing the refinement. Uh, there's no need for water. Just use air spray and a light touch, and you won't heat up the tooth at all. It's interesting to note that studies have shown that the greatest heat generation that occurs in dentistry is with polishing procedures and not with cutting procedures. This is the 169L because I want to go to a smaller burr when I'm breaking this mesial facial contact just to barely get past there and keep that more conservative so that we don't show gold when the patient smiles. It's rare that I'm going to do an MOD on a Mexley first premolar Clinically, uh, typically those cases get done with composite, but today we're doing gold. The 7102 carbide is excellent for getting into these interproximal areas and starting the hollow grind. The hollow grind procedure is difficult to do when you don't have a lot of access because the burrs are necessarily wider. Uh, in this particular case, we'd already prepared the MO on the second premolar and we're going to be preparing a DL on the canine so we're not worried so much about hitting the adjacent tooth. But this 7102 is, is a skinnier carbide than the 7404 and it's able to get interproximately a lot easier. And You can see that this basic concavity that you're creating. You want to be careful not to make a feather edge margin. This should end up being uh, like a chamfer. So this burr is great for the initiation of the hollow grind, but it's not very good for the completion of the hollow grind because it's just too skinny. So these hollow grinds are okay, but they're a little bit thin at the gingival. and uh, We want to give a little more bulk so the gold will cast better. 7404 is really the, the workhorse of the hollow grind. It's hard to get interproximal initially, so that's why we use the 7102 at first. And now you can see we're getting a little bit more bulk. probably looking at about a millimeter axial depth at those interproximal areas. You can also run this along the occlusal and take advantage of the natural taper of the burr to create the proper draw. 
and to finish the enamel margins. A little bit of a bevel is a good thing to do. Not a flat bevel, but more of a steep one. And sometimes I'll use the 7901 in really difficult access areas, like out here on the mesial facial, just to get the tip of that through there to remove any loose or undermined enamel. But this is not really the right bird to use to create the hollow grind. It's more just to finish the margins. Now, even though this preparation would seem like it doesn't have a lot of retention and resistance form, the opposite is true. It, they're incredibly retentive, incredibly resistant. Any sharp edges should be rounded off just a little bit. So now you can see that we have the uh, nearly completed preparation. The 42S off angle chisel is uh, pretty good to uh, smooth off the pulpal and maybe remove any enamel rods that are loose. So uh, that's basically it. The preparation is complete, pretty simple. And I want to remind you of our course in December of each year on cast gold and gold foil. And uh, it's a hands-on course where we take you from start to finish on all of the techniques that I've described in these uh, videos on cast gold. It should be a lot of fun. Each participant will walk home with two castings that they make during the course. So for now, goodbye.